inspired me to do this film is I was actually um, asked by um, Lord Montague's nephew, who um, is uh, an entrepreneur, businessman. I was doing some advertising for his company. And he came to me one day and he said, I have an interesting uncle. His name is Lord Montague. He lives in a castle in England. Would you like to go interview him? And my first response is, well, well, of course, you know, this, this sounds interesting. So I fly to England and that's what happened, you know, with like I fly to England with just two other guys, a uh, very small crew just to interview him. And he starts telling me all these incredible things that happened in his life. And I, I was just like, this, how, how have I never heard of this man? How have I never heard of this story? And come to find out, um, the family had just never opened up about it before. Um, it was very, um, difficult for them too. So I was able to gain their trust and, you know, like, let's, let's, let's make a film about this. Let's, you know, tell people the story. And I went back to his nephew and said, you know, let's, I would like to make this into a film. And it took about a year to get everybody on board. Right. Um, but that's where that came about. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, research we had to do, a lot of um, digging around to understand first just, you know, what it's like. And there's so many different things. In the 50s, there's the, the trial where he's put in on a trial for being gay. I mean, I'm like, I, I didn't know it was against the law. That was a whole interesting part in itself to learn about. Um, the idea that there are all these castles in England being burned to the ground. Uh, I didn't know any of that. So everything was very new. Um, but what was interesting about it is that because I was coming at it completely new, um, the interviews, I think it helped because it was such a fresh perspective. I didn't grow up in the culture, so I didn't have a stigma about the aristocracy or any of this stuff. It was just all so new and, new and intriguing. And I think that people appreciated that. They appreciated the questions and, and the, the uh, just natural intrigue. Um, there was definitely class was very much um, part of the culture in the 50s. Uh, and that's why the Montague case became so explosive because it was not only um, ar aristocracy, but you had uh, RAF men in the Royal Air Force, and then you had uh, sex. So you had this perfect mixture of a sensational story that people want, that the, all the Daily Mail, the tabloids, everybody wanted to talk about. And that's what made this so explosive. And then when he comes out of prison, and he opens his home as a tourist attraction. Then again, he was rub rubbing against the class system because all of his fellow aristocrats were like, you, no, 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 you should not be mixing it up with the public, you know, welcome into your home. And, you know, and so he was very much a pioneer, just kind of, he was like, I don't care about the class system. It doesn't mean anything to me. That's really, you could tell that in his actions. He's an entrepreneur. He's a guy that um, from a very young age, um, he, he, there's two things. Um, what I found out about Lord Montague is that, um, that kept him going is that one, he was trusted with something as a very young age. It's very, none of us can really understand what it's like to be trusted with a 7,000 acre estate that's been established in the 1200s and a palace and said, this is yours to carry on and you're the sole male heir and then your dad dies and it's all yours. So he knew his whole life this is your mission. And so the trial, the huge obstacle in his life was something where it's like that happened. I'm compartmentalizing it. I'm putting it aside. I'm moving forward because my goal in life, this is my goal is to pass on my heritage and what I've been given. And so in order to do that, he had to think of new ideas. And that's where the entrepreneurial spirit really came out. He had all these ideas and amazing amount of energy. And that's just what carried and kept him through. He was very um, single-minded on a, on a goal. What did I learn um, about myself or what I learned? Um, I learned about myself um, perseverance. I learned a lot about, um, you know, uh, when I set out to make this film, I didn't know it was going to take four years. I didn't know all the you know, the late nights and all the, you know, times where I just wouldn't be able to hang out with friends. I mean, there's just a lot of isolation working on something that long. Um, I learned a lot about what it takes to finish a project um, and make it the best it can be. I also learned a lot about history that I didn't really understand. And um, I had never really considered myself a history buff or something like, you know, I, I, I don't really have an, an incredible family history. I'm Jewish, and so I do have a lot of history there as a Jew um, or a completed Jew. Um, but, um, you know, that is, I, I just found a really fond appreciation for history um, through learning, um, you know, the English history and what Lord Montague was preserving. So, um, yeah, that's what I learned. 
what I want people to come away with when they see this is um, they, I want them to see a person um, that, against all odds, um, still accomplished what he set out to do. And something I think that we can learn from Lord Montague is he was um, he was put on trial for something that um, today is would never happen, right? And um, But he didn't make it his life's goal to say, you were wrong, you shouldn't have done that to me. And I think a lot of times today you hear people saying, like, people doubted me, they did this, that, I'm going to prove you wrong, you know? And, and really that only goes so far in your life. What you really, are, what it's really means something is, what's your goal? Keep your eye on that because that's what in the end is going to give you fulfillment, not proving people wrong. And Montague, I really respect him for this terrible thing was happened to him. He was put in prison, but he didn't go out and say, you were wrong. You know, you shouldn't have done this to me. He just kept going in his life and said, you know, that happened, but I'm not going to let it set me back. And I think that that is something we can all look up to.